Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And uh, Pastor, today's Tuesday, obviously. Yep. And we covered current events. I like getting your opinion and feedback, and you're unfiltered yep. on, on certain things. And today I wanted to bring up something that just kind of came through. And media is calling it Ministry of Truth. And the last time I heard of media ministry of truth was from the book 1984 with George Orwell mm -hmm. talking about how <clears throat> everything was censored and uh, in just kind of at that time a very weird thing. And now this word is being thrown out again as a possibility where things get dis it's disinformation. Is this another way of taking control of our country or what is it pastor oh well this ministry of truth that's interesting to me that yeah i i haven't read 1984 since i'd say 1977 <laughs> so it's been 45 years or more since i've read it and yet it, it did leave a lasting impression on me and i do remember that their uh, truth ministry that they had in the uh, in the book was prophetic in many ways. I, I think it actually was a uh, reflection of what was taking place in, the, uh, in Russia and the various things that formulated over time with the revolution and the introduction of Marxism, communism, whatever. But um, yeah, we're, we're having this particular um, office that's being created, at least as it appears to be in, uh, in the process of being created where they're going to put somebody over, de over, over the, um, um, what's the word, the control of the way people are, are putting out their ideas and social networks and various things like that. And uh, once you let the elephant get its nose underneath that tent, it eventually the entire elephant finds its way into that into that room and that's what's going to take place there's no doubt about it it's interesting that there are so many things that were written concerning um, the awareness that Orwell seems to have had during his day that have actually seemed to become prophetic in our day where they're listening to what you're saying and uh, and they're wanting to to restructure your way of thinking to be in agreement with the the ruling party. So yeah, that's taking place. It's obvious it's taking place, and many are standing up at the moment and they're saying, "We cannot put up with this. This cannot take place. We cannot have this." And and it it most certainly appears to be a fulfillment of Orwell and the things that Orwell had to say during that day. So how does this affect the Christian today? I mean, we just, here in California, for those who may be watching outside of California, legislation passed AB 2223. Well, that's actually, that's actually in the process of being In the process passed. of being. Uh, now we're hearing of this disinformation uh, where information is going to be censored. And, and so it just seems like the controls are just getting... It's already tired. been there. I mean, when you look at the, the, the various... Um, social networks, you know, it, it's already been there. YouTube has been censoring, Instagram had been sent, everybody censors. And somewhere they have truth monitors, people that I'm supposed to think have all the facts and are very unbiased. They, they've they been monitoring what people have said. People have done that since uh, the beginning of telephones. I mean, I mean, when people, it's been around all for a long time you know, to, to listen in on conversations, to determine whether or not these things are true or not, you know, and all of that. That's been going on for a long time. It's just becoming more more obvious now, I would say. It's just becoming something that people are somewhat more aware of. The problem is, is that the the larger mouths, we'll say NBC, CBS, ABC, they're, they're, they're the ones stifling mm -hmm. because you may have... Uh, we'll say a, a program with Tucker Carlson, people, they hate him. So I'll use him as an example. You may have Tucker Carlson, but he doesn't have the kind of uh, viewership that uh, ABC, CBS, or NBC has. He doesn't have that. He may have a few million people watching, but 
you have 330 million or so Americans, and they're, they're, there's no way that this one program or this one channel is really influencing 330 million minds. It's just not happening. Um, but people like that have been singled out, and Fox News in particular, you know, um, Obama was real big on that. Clinton was real big on people not saying things he liked. I think every politician gets mad that they're not 100% followed and loved by everybody. I think that's part of the, the mental problem that they have, that ego desire that, to control and to be known. And in many ways, if it's, if it's not dealt with, it shows itself by attacking people who don't agree with them. You see that. You see that with... Uh, with uh, both parties, with the Republicans as well as the Democrats. It just so happens that for the last several years, there's been an open hatred for Republican and conservative ideas, an open hatred, to the point where um, many people don't know who they really can believe. I, I, I don't believe the press. They used to be the fifth estate. They were the ones who were supposed to be monitoring in the sense of standing up saying, wait, let us question authority. That doesn't happen anymore. They're in bed with the Democrats. We see that. We know that. The fact that somebody just leaked some information from the Supreme Court, something that hasn't been done in the history of the court, especially in its modern era, um, and they're just leaking things. And before you know it, there are people out there protesting something that hasn't even actually officially been decided. This is what we're living with right now, John, and and uh, and Americans are, are being are driven side to side by these things. So what's what's the answer? Well, tomorrow we're going to be looking at Ephesians 4, and we're to put aside lying, and each is to speak truth to his neighbor, you know. God has already given to us a ministry of truth. Amen. He's already given it to us. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, you're not to bear false witness against your neighbor. That's already been there. We're not to lie. We're not to, we're not to do those kinds of things. God desires... Uh, integrity and honesty within within our heart, in the innermost being. We're supposed to be people of truth. We speak the truth. So we already have commands that are not being followed by the world nor the church. We already have commands that have been given to us. So some new uh, appointed young woman who is wanting to be a Broadway star, you know, is now going to be telling me uh, what is true and what is not true, and to formalize that is just unbelievable. If they want to talk about what is true, why don't you talk about, instead of the Ukraine, why don't you start talking about what's taking place at our southern border? Why don't you do that? I would like to hear that. And you have a minister of truth. Okay, where's the vice president who's supposed to be over all of these things, protecting the interests of the United States? Why do we have people from the Senate going to the Ukraine promising uh, treasure and, uh, and our, our support to the Ukraine. Why is that happening? What's going on? Those things aren't being spoken about. So when this minister of truth comes into, into office, perhaps they ought to begin looking at why Hunter Biden's laptop was never exposed for what it is, why so many things have taken place over the last year and a half or two years that nobody seems to want to talk about. So that's why we don't hold them in any high esteem at all. These people, many of them are just flat out, they're just lying to us. And I think a lot of Americans have awakened. That's So minister of truth, please, please, you know. I, 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 I don't believe that they speak the truth. Uh, you know, you, when you're saying this, Pastor, it reminds me when, when uh, Jesus is in Pilate are having this conversation and Pilate says, what is truth? Yeah, what is truth? And uh, where he's speaking the truth right in front of him. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the truth, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think for Christians, it's time for us to awaken to, as you mentioned last week about the potential AB 2223 passing, is that we have to stand up. And, and voice and live what truth is. Exactly. I, I don't see any reason to be um, lacking courage to speak what is true. That's what sets you free. And I, I was just reading something, and we'll close with this. I don't want to keep them too long. But I was just reading something last week that said that something like 70%, I wish I could give the exact number. I didn't memorize the percentage, but it was somewhere around 70% of uh, millennial Christians, quote-unquote, 
believe that it's wrong to try and bring a conversion to their unbelieving friends. 70% think it's wrong. Why? Because they think they're judging. They're making judgment. That's how brainwashed from youth all the way to their age, uh, that's how brainwashed they are. So if you should actually say that lifestyle is unhealthy, if you should say, but you're going to end up diseased or you're going to end up, you know, harmed in some way, and God has a better, oh, no, you shouldn't tell them that you're judging them. See, so so Christians got to stand up, and, I'm, and I'll be teaching this tomorrow yes. night, but not with bitter anger and not with meanness of spirit, but to just speak the truth in love because we are supposed to be people of truth. We've been saved by truth, and, and we should be speaking that truth with a, a love for, and concern for others, John. So I don't need this ministry of truth. I already have a ministry of truth. Jesus Christ is the truth, and I preach his word, which is the truth, and it's my desire to live out that which I preach, and that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. So. Thank you for that, Pastor. And do want to invite you guys to come out tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. as you're taking us through Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. And, uh, and what a great opportunity is to invite our friends and family to come join us on the mid uh, midweek service to come worship, get into a Bible study, and, and just be refreshed by God's Word to know the truth. Amen. And, and then on Thursday, we have National Day of Prayer at 12 o'clock. We'll be at City Hall. Where our, here in Chino. In Chino. Here in, I forget, thank you. Uh, where our worship team is going to be leading. It's going to be at the City Hall lawn area in Chino, right off Central. And Well, uh, our church has been given responsibility over that. Yes. So it's not simply that our, our, our worship team is leading worship, but we've been given the privilege of leading that. So I would invite all believers who are in our area to come and in, uh, to pray. Amen. And then that evening, mm -hmm. we have it here in the chapel. That's right here are our, our church national day of prayer. Yes. So we have quite a number of events and then Sunday morning at 8.30 and 1045. Really look forward to seeing you guys. And Pastor, thank you so much for sharing. Of course. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you and we will see you soon.